Are you tired of the height of your desk not working with your chair? Maybe you want to be able to stand up sometimes, but your desk is just too low. Maybe you just need an upgrade from the old TV you're currently using as a desk. Well, I think I have a solution. Probably comes to no surprise that I like making stuff, but often I find myself trying to do too much and get a little overwhelmed. I'm currently trying to finish up this kitchen I started renovating a year ago, making stuff for Christmas, working on probably the biggest project I've ever done, building a wooden body for a car. Now, on top of all that, I have to build a desk. I'm definitely going to be hitting the easy button on this project and calling for some help from the shop robot. I told my friends at FlexiSpot what I was looking for, and they sent me over a set of their EC4 Pro Series legs. These have two motors and can handle up to 275 pounds, so weight won't be an issue. The best part though, they only took about 15 minutes to assemble. Next, I headed over to my local home improvement store and picked up a butcher block top. I drew up a quick sketch and let my CNC do the hard work for me. Okay, I'm probably simplifying this process a little. I did all my design work in Carveco Maker. This will be a two-part machining process. The first will be a pocket that I can fill with epoxy. Next, I'll cut a design into the cured epoxy and fill that with a different color. Of course you could do this with a handheld router or other tools, but there's a ton of really affordable hobby CNC routers on the market, and on top of that, they make a great side hustle. I have a bunch of videos on them if you're looking for more info. I'll put some links in the description, and please don't hesitate to ask any questions. It's important to seal your piece before you just start pouring on your epoxy. The colors tend to bleed into the fibers of the wood, and it just doesn't look good. Shellac is cheap and easy to apply. Just make sure you use it in a well-ventilated area. Sealing will also help prevent bubbles. You could substitute the shellac for lacquer, polyurethane, or even brush on a light coat of epoxy. You're about to see me make a series of mistakes that really threw this project through a loop and had me banging my head against the wall for a few days. It's absolutely vital that you follow the instructions on the back of your epoxy. These mixing cups really help you get the right ratio if you're paying attention and fill them to the right lines. This should have been a 2 to 1 ratio. I went a little heavy on the hardener. It's important to note that there's different epoxies for different situations. This pour ended up being just a little over a quarter inch, and I did it in one shot. That's pushing it a little, and I probably should have done it in two pours. On top of that, I probably used the heat gun a little too much and overheated the epoxy. I went a little heavy on the pigment, and it ended up being a lot darker than I wanted. I tried using some alcohol inks to lighten it up a little bit, but this really didn't turn out the way I wanted it to either. The takeaway from my frustration should be to take your time and have a good plan. Follow the instructions and don't try to cut corners. I've done plenty of epoxy projects with great success by following this. I just messed up this time. The best option was to just run the same pocket toolpath over again and remove the epoxy. This proved to be another issue. Cutting out the epoxy created a huge amount of static electricity. I've grounded my machine and done some other things to help counteract this, but it still kept disconnecting a few minutes into the cut. The only solution was to run it without my dust collection turn on. This made a huge mess, but it got the job done. Finally, I was able to re-pour the epoxy. I did still get some bubbles, but I think that was because I rushed a little and didn't seal the surface as well as I should have. One day I'll learn to be a little patient. Next, I cut out the hexagon pattern and filled it with some slightly different color epoxy. It wasn't supposed to be so sparkly, but as a final kick in the pants, I dropped the whole container of pigment into my epoxy by accident. A surfacing bit makes quick work to remove any excess epoxy, and a little sanding will get everything smooth. I found that using a spray bottle and wetting the surface a little prevented me from getting any disconnects. Before installing the legs, I quickly applied a coat of finish to the bottom off camera. 
It's important to finish all sides of your top to prevent it from warping. I use the supplied hardware to attach them. The brackets have rubber grommets that allow the top to float and move if it needs to with seasonal changes in humidity. I needed to do a little sanding, but before I got too far, I wanted to fill in some of the bubbles. I got a little carried away here and ended up throwing the top back on the CNC to flatten it again. Even after all that, I still found more bubbles and just decided to fill these with CA glue. I tried to get my CNC to do the sanding for me, but it wasn't having any part of that. Hey, so could I ask you to do me a favor? I used my track saw to trim off the edges. I cut the front and back square, but tilted the blade to a 10 degree angle for the sides to change things up a bit. I ran a 45 degree chamfer bit around the top corners to make it a little more comfortable to lean against. For the finish, I wanted something shiny and durable that really highlighted the grain. I went with this Total Boat Gleam. The fumes from this are super strong, the respirator is a must. I found that I got great results by applying it with a foam brush. Once the whole surface was covered, I used another, larger foam brush to tip the edge and smooth everything out. I applied two coats, sanding to 220 grit in between. I temporarily installed the controls so I could raise the desk. It's crazy how high this thing goes. I have to admit, I was a little nervous running it up that high the first time. These flexi spot legs move pretty quick and are really smooth. I attached the control panel and connected all the wires. This one even has a memory so you can save multiple positions. And there you have it, a desk that practically built itself. I think I might add some drawers and a keyboard tray to the bottom in the future. Let me know what you think. If you're interested in checking out some of these legs, go check out the affiliate link in the description. That would really help me out. You can also help the channel out by liking and sharing this video, and clicking the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Here's a few more of my videos YouTube thinks you might like, so I'll see you guys over on one of those.